I am here on the line. I got Darren Cole, AKA Cole Crush. Live with me for episode one of Roll Call. We are ripping through Boston. Shred Lights is our poor sponsor for today. How you feeling out there, Darren? How you feeling, bro? Yo, super stoked to be uh, linking up with you for Roll Call. Thanks so much for having me. Boston One Wheel, Float Addicts, we out here. Let's hey, it. what it WPI do. WPI Escape. Right, right. Yeah, man, it was such a good day, man. Look at the the sunlight was just pouring in. It was just gorgeous. So where were we headed this day? Do you remember to that fort place? And that, uh, yeah, we were heading to pretty legendary spot. If you're a Boston or a Massachusetts local, you definitely know the ride out to uh, Castle Island is what it's called. It's uh, right there in South Boston. Okay, word, awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed myself. Um, but yeah, to the, the listeners who are just tuning in for this uh, roll call, just basically just adding some, some depth to the videos that are going, because people always have questions about the videos that they see on my YouTube, and there's always a story behind it, and I figure why not share the story. Um, so uh, yeah, this episode we're going to share the story. Also, we're going to get into some questions that other writers have shared, um, and we're going to have fun. You know, the vibe is just to have fun and, and uh, spread the stoke. So uh, first of all, Darren, Give us some background on yourself. When did you uh, first come across the One Wheel? And well, how did you find out about the One Wheel? And what year was it? Um, I got my first One Wheel in September 2018. Uh, I it was mainly a commuting tool at first. It was really just the whole idea. I think I had seen them a few times in the Cambridge area. Um, I actually bought a scooter for $300 off of Amazon just as a way to stop having to take the train and the bus and walking everywhere. And that worked out pretty well, but it had like a really bad battery. And then I just was like, well, is there a better solution? Is there a better solution? And then you know what happened? I bumped into Sly Dog Stro. Nice. Okay. And I found him on on uh, YouTube and I was like, you know what? I don't know if most people know this, but I'm actually, I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I spent a lot of time in Chicago. It's only like 90 minutes away. Okay. So when I saw him ripping the one wheel on the streets of Chicago, I was like, that's the vehicle. Because when I had my scooter, it really sucked on the bumps. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I saw him riding in Chicago and I was like, I know those streets. I know how rugged they are. So I was like, I'm going to get one of those things. And that's kind of what it really that started. That was the beginning all. of it. Word. That's what's up, man. Okay. Nice, man. And then um, what inspires your riding style? You have a, a different riding style than, and than some other riders that I've seen. Uh, um, are there things that you feel inspire that style, that style of riding? I mean, I hate to keep mentioning his name, but yeah, Sly Dog. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> when I first got the board, I, uh, or before I even had the board, I was watching a lot of his videos and funny truth be told, uh, I actually owned flight fins before I owned the board. I ordered okay. flight fins immediately. <laughs> and his, okay. And, yeah. And his, I wanted to be stroke. So like his stance was close to the wheel because of his, because of the flight fins. When I got the board, I realized I'm not putting flight fins on. I'll probably kill myself. <laughs> uh, so I, I gave my flight fins away because I was okay. like, just learning how to ride the board was scary enough for me. Um, right. and, and I think the rest of the style probably comes from I snowboarded a couple times as a kid and I always really, really loved just the idea of snowboarding. So I think I, I naturally watch a lot of snowboarding videos and a lot of surfing videos. So okay, I think yeah, just the yeah. arms very active, the body's into it. Yeah, man, that's cool. That's good to know. Work, yeah, I, man. He said he, he said he had flight fins before he got the board. It's funny because before I got my board, I also was looking at flight fins heavy because I was like, yo, I want to be able to like jump with this thing. And uh, big shout out to the flight fins squad because they're cool as hell. Uh, Ori and all those cats. Uh, Ori is such a great dude. I met him at the last Foot Life Fest, man. I love that dude. Such good vibes. And um, yeah, man. And also send it Sam. He's another rider is out there ripping, Ooh. killing it. I love that dude. He's dope. Um, but uh, yeah, man, flight fins are cool. But I, I like I like the whole finless. I like jumping stuff without fins. I like hitting slides and 
ramps and all that stuff without fins. I think that uh, that adds to the challenge. Me as a rider, I'm big on challenging myself. Um, I don't spend as much time working on tricks as uh, those the trick riders who we all know in the game who do only or mostly tricks. Um, but I think that the amount of time that I spent on the board in general is what allows me to learn tricks in one, two hour sessions. Like I just pick up stuff real quickly. But um, but yeah, I prefer flight fin list stuff. But I've definitely ridden flight fins a few times and, and they were fun. They were fun. I had fun with them. It's a, it's a different world and different level, different kind of tricks are unlocked when you do have access to them. Um, but there's nothing like hitting the drop and just landing clean and just without them and just knowing that it was all skills, you know? Um, yeah, man. Oh my gosh, yo, this ride today, man. Oh, 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 coming up soon about the crash. Um, I'm about to crash, but uh, well, uh, let's let's get into uh, those questions because we don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, you want to share some of the questions that and where did these questions come from? Um, well, yeah, the first questions that we had were from uh, at little one wheeler. He's a, a staple in the in the Boston scene. OK. Uh, and I, I reached out to him and asked him a few questions. Um, and yeah, I think that's like the first one. And then the other ones, I just started going to school at uh, WPI, which is in Central Mass. And we actually have a one wheel club there and a lot of this. What's the uh, what's the name of the club? I think it's just called WPI Eastgate. There are people that ride okay, other gotcha. vehicles okay, cool. besides the one wheel, but there's definitely at least 10 riders, I would say, that have one wheels most of them are pints but everyone's ready and eager to level up Heck yeah look at the dust coming off the board bro this yeah. looks so crazy i was i was like oh he's getting far ahead let me uh catch my cup <laughs> boom boom <laughs> yeah but it was more of like a banging oh. the ankle type thing i oh. smacked my camera and i banged my ankle i mean most of my this is what most of my crashes quote unquote are now I don't normally fall as much. Uh, I'll come off the board, but um, but yeah, I mean the the, <laughs> the first time I really nosed dive riding my friend's board, I ran out 25 mile per hour nose dive. I would have to mention though, you are definitely one of the most uh, athletic riders I've met. So. It does not surprise that. me that you can run out a 25 mile an hour. That was only a one timer and my, my calves and my toes and my heels hurt tremendously. I sent the screenshot to my friend cause he had let me borrow his board for a week. This was like a, a more than almost a year than before I got mine. And he was like, dude, dope, you went max speed. He's like, wait a minute, did you crash? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, well technically, the board crashed. I wasn't on the board, but I mean, like, yo, like, I was. This is he had expressed to me, you know, what nose diving was and and pushback. But like, if you only share it to me once before I start riding, I'm not gonna remember that like a week into it. Like, I don't remember. And I'm like, let me get around this bus, and bruh, like, floored it. The joint just gave out. It hit the the front, hit the ground. It felt like it was slow motion. And then, yeah. um, but he had fangs. So somehow I like stepped off. Cause like, imagine like when it hits the ground and you go to step off, instead of it just launching you, it slides with fangs. Mm. So like, that's the good and the bad part about fangs. It's like, yo, it can save you because the board still rolls. The momentum doesn't stop. So you get a chance, depending on your, your skill level of balance, you know, reflexes, you get a chance to prepare yourself to step off if you can maintain your balance. Um, and somehow I did, but the board was flipping. I mean, this board flipped. It barrel rolled like mm, 20 times, <laughs> like <laughs> slam, slam, slam. Like it was just spinning. I was like, oh my God, I thought it was like broken. Turned it on and rode it home. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, let's get into those questions, man. Let's get into those questions. What's your first right, question? So we got Jesse Moskovitz, little one wheeler at little one wheeler. And his question is, uh, I'm going to rephrase them a little bit just because they're written to me to say to you. That's fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he asks, what or are you planning to go for the most miles on the GT? 
So I'll keep that short and sweet. Um, if I get a GT and I ride it, I, 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 I think that it would be unlikely for me to not have the most miles. Just because a hundred mile day is not work for me, if that makes sense. Like to the average person, that is something that is extreme. To me, a hundred mile a day is not extreme. I mean, one week I was testing myself with the XR and I did 400 miles in five days. I was like, yo, let me see how many hundred mile days I can do in a row. I did a hundred mile a day, a hundred mile a day. I took a day off because it rained. I did a hundred mile a day, a hundred mile a day. I'm like, all right, cool. This is like water. It's not stress to me. Um, I don't know many riders who are willing to do that, period. Um, but uh, I'm not, right now, I don't have that set in my mind to answer, to answer this question. I'm not like out here like, yeah, can't wait to be the GT to be number one in the world. I think at this point, I've already proved my point. Of course, there's still people who, who doubt and question and claim they have the same amount of miles and more, which I think is total BS. But um, yeah, it, it is what it is. But I, I'm just excited to ride something, to be honest. Nice, nice. And then he asks, what are some improvements slash features on the app he is looking for? Ooh. Um, man, I wish they really had implemented something where you could tell your tire pressure through the app, kind of like cars. Um, because tire pressure is really important to me. Even now, when my I ride 30 PSI now um, in my Burr's tire, which is not great for trails, but it's cool for for anything that's not constantly bumpy, um, just because it maximizes my range and maximizes my top speed. Like, bro, I can coast in 2021 20, range like easily if I wanted to. Um, but uh, I would, I would love a, a tire pressure gauge that would tell me tire pressure. I would love to be able to. Um, I mean, they fix the lights settings. I mean, I'm not gonna front. Like, the app is pretty dope. Um, if there was a more intuitive system for connecting with other riders, like a, a live chat system, like a group chat system, or um, uh, like a messaging system, like where you could just like converse, like a walkie talkie setting, like with riders who are within a mile, you can set it up so that, hey, me and um, Cole are gonna go on this ride. Let's do walkie talkie ride with each other. And we would have each other in our headphones and the phone would can work as like a walkie talkie between us two, that'd be vicious. Um, but, uh, for the most part, man, I'm not somebody who wants a whole lot. I just want, uh, the one wheels to continue to exist. I want riders to learn more and more about their boards so that they don't crash as much and then hit the world with the, I don't know what happened type thing. Um, <laughs> you know, because how many people do you know who are, um, driving cars who get into accidents and they're like, well, I don't know, you know, what happened? They know in general. But uh, for the most part, when it comes to one wheeling, people don't read the manual. They just hop on um, after the, the learning process where they're asking a lot of questions. After that, they just go ham. They go crazy, slamming the board around, crashing and all this stuff. And we forget that the boards are computers. And then they wonder why they don't work. So if you if you took your MacBook and you slammed it all over the place <laughs> and then it didn't work one day, you you would not say, oh yeah, it just turned off one day. I don't know why. <laughs> you would be like, oh yeah, because I have been slamming it. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. no one factors that in. They're like, it just turns off. Um, it's like, no, it doesn't just turn off. It's because we break them. But um, yeah, I wish that uh, riders would learn more. I wish that, uh, yeah, for the most part, the walkie talkie system and um, and I don't know, simple things like uh, maybe a, a ability to change how the lights work. Like maybe you can have the strobing effect and maybe you can have, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what one will cooks up. Right. But if y'all, if, if Future Motion, if you steal my ideas, kudos. Like I take those ideas and run with them. Just shout me out, bruh. But uh, yeah. So, yeah nice. It. Well, all right. So I'm looking at the time and I'm looking at our questions. I'm going to uh -huh. skip around it and like, I'll keep, I'll keep them. I'll keep some yeah. of the, the well, some short. of the questions. Some of these are good ones that we need the the full explanation. So I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna just I'll jump around a little bit to okay. save time. Okay. Um, I'm thinking this one says what about 
actually okay actually i found this one check it out so it's if from wpi eskate and he was wondering how many miles slash months before you got to the point where you could realistically expect not to crash on a pushing it ride so quote unquote okay got pushing, you um or do you just push it even harder the more that you get i mean uh i keep it short and sweet uh there was if i had to think back i say i say i was pretty comfortable after six to seven thousand miles i mean obviously i was comfortable comfortable before then but like ten thousand fifteen thousand miles in like it at this point it, it it wasn't so much about like knowing when I'm not going to crash. Like I knew what was, cause I, I tested riding at top speed. One time I was like, yo, how long can I sustain this board going top speed? Um, and I was riding at like 24, 25 miles an hour for like a minute straight. And, uh, uh, and I learned that, Hey, the one wheel is not built to sustain that level of performance. It's not designed to, to be written like that. Cause the board gave out on me. Um, and I crashed going 27.2 miles an hour. And, um, and after that, which was pretty early in my career, which is four or five, six months in, I had a pretty good idea of what the cusp was and finding the cusp, uh, which is my second YouTube video. And um, once I understood the cusp, it changed the way that I ride. And I'm able to, I mean, there's no, I don't, I've never met a rider who I couldn't keep up with. Um, I was riding right along Dom at Float Life Fest, um, not on the trails, but when we were riding on paths. And um, I remember I bumped into Sly on like one of the last days I was there. Um, I didn't know he was behind me. He was trying to catch up to me and he didn't catch me. He just, we pulled up at where we arrived and he's like, yo, you're fast, S-H-I-T. He's like, yo, you're fast. And I'm like, respect, you know, because it's like the one who can only go so fast. And I know how it works. Um, my board doesn't function the way that it's supposed to anymore. Many people will ride and be like, oh, I hate this. It's like so like loose um, just because things are just worn. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a comfortable thing, but but never be too comfortable. Always know that it's a battery, bro. And batteries will never work 100% of the way that they're supposed to function 100% of the time. So when you ride, give the battery room to breathe. Don't push it totally give it space push and release push and release mm, i love that and then two yeah if you haven't checked out uh one wheels wings uh video about the cusp i think you know he definitely goes into great detail about just knowing how to push the board and i think all the best riders know where that cusp is so you know if uh sly dog stro is giving you the head nod that you're fast I think we can agree that you're fast. Right. right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But um, um, yeah. All right. So we got another one. Uh, how about this? Uh, do you? This is from Max Maria, from WPI Eskate. He's also on IG. Um, do you see a better one wheel than the GT in the future? And if so, what would you name it? Oh man, that's that's thinking so far. Um, <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I think that there definitely will be better one was in the future um, because we'll find technology to make more powerful batteries that'll be lighter. Um, a lighter board will always be a faster board. Um, and um, what would I name it? I don't know. I'm not so vain to, to name uh, something after myself. I think GT is cool. I mean, you got Dragon Ball GT, you got cars. You know, um, but then you look at stuff like the Ducati, they just name their stuff, whatever, Pinagali, just like something cool, you know? Um, I have no idea. I can't answer that question. Cool, cool. Um, KJ from WPI Eastgate asked, how many wheels and one wheel parts have you gone through? Even if it's just an estimate, because I know you've gone through a lot. <laughs> right. Um, my first board died at 8,260 miles or something like that. I got the battery wet um, and destroyed my BMS. And someone let me borrow a battery that night. Um, but I'd say this is 
I've had maybe three CDXRs, one double XR battery, two stock batteries. I've gone through, I've broken at least three motors. Um, I'm mostly when I say breaking, I mean breaking off the silver bolts into the hub, I mean, like snapping them while riding. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I do drops and stuff too, but like I'm not doing, uh, that's not how I'm breaking the bolts. I'm breaking the bolts from putting excess strain on them while just riding. Uh, I, I can't express. Um, yeah, that's crazy to me because uh, I know other riders who break those bolts specifically, but they're like always doing drops. Um, imagine when bolts are breaking just from just putting miles on them, the vibration and the heat, you know, it's just like um, this is my obviously my still my same controller, but we've had to do surgery on it like four or five times. Yo, you are ripping, dude. Uh, first of all, after I talk about what I've gone through, I'm going to talk about your riding style, ask you some questions about that. Um, I love how you hit like all features. That is so fun. It was so fun riding with you, bro. Oh, um, nice. Dude, man, like we had so much fun. Even when you came to DC, it was so fun. I wish we would have would have filmed that because uh, we did like 50 miles that day. And I think that uh, I think that was cool because I got to show you a little bit of my vibe. We went all the way out towards the National Harbor, and um, we did my my uh, my place where i always do miles um but oh uh, yeah no, no. i mean when i rode with you in dc though i only reason i didn't film that much is because i was just so nervous to be with the wings so whatever, we, we're, we're gonna get one in i'll be uh -huh. back this year i'll be back this year and we'll we'll make it a filming occasion okay now that i know we're homies too and also too sometimes when i'm filming with people for the first time you know it's all about building rapport so now right I know yeah yeah no 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 heck yeah no, 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 no. Heck yeah, no i knew you were going to be chill before uh before we rode man i mean good vibes are good vibes you know good people surround themselves with good peoples um so uh yeah oh, i love this hill there's like um <laughs> i don't hit every feature but i like hitting features um it's just fun to challenge myself. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I average maybe about 1800 miles per tire. Um, mm. So if y'all can do the math, uh, how many tires I've, I've gone through, but there have been times where I've written 200 miles and then got a flat tire because I used to live in the hood. So there's hella construction going on. I mean, there's been at least three or four times where like I've only put like 200, or less miles on the tire and then got a flat, like I had to replace it. Um, so uh, quite a few tires. I've only went through like maybe four foot pads every time I, and I ride the uh, Craft and Ride One Tail Plus, which is the extended really long. And look at my stance, it's really wide. Like I have my foot pretty much on the front and on the back. And I mean, we talk about, I was telling someone about that um there's benefits to that like so if your feet are close together and let's say you hit a hole all of your weight is right there where the hole is mm. so what are the likeliness what is the likeliness that you will get stuck in that hole now imagine if your weight is distributed so it's more in the front and then your weight is the oh your board was acting up but imagine when your weight is distributed like if you have your foot on the front of the board and your foot on the tail of the board by the time the wheel hits that hole part of your weight is already over the hole mm, yeah that makes sense i didn't even think about that but um so so to have it more evenly distributed um can work in your favor and it, it can also work against you but that's just my logic um also just but just standing with your feet so close i don't i feel like that's not as stable at in general as um having it spread out but, but to each his own there's no right or wrong way to ride the board i mean really it's all about the vibe um but uh, what else was i talking about um parts front foot pads i went through a lot um, i probably had like 10 10 to 12 of them um not a whole lot but uh Quite a and do you do anything now that we're a little bit into the the whole world of front foot mods and positive uh -huh. sensors? Is uh -huh. it okay uh -huh. if I ask? Are you, yeah, go for it. Are you dabbling in that too? They probably want to know. Nah, man, I don't want to mess with that. Um, I am. Uh, so my parents are military. My dad was a, a soldier, and um, way, the way he raised me was really like, take the challenge, son. Go against the grain. 
take the hard way. So I don't know. Posi tapping feels like cheating to some extent to me. It makes it easier. I don't want to make things easier for myself. I'd rather just learn to do it without posi tapping. Um, now that means that there are going to be some things that I may not be able to do at all um, because of certain things that certain people are doing require the posi tap. And maybe, maybe my stance on it might change. And when I say cheating, I'm not saying other people are cheating when they use it. I'm saying for me, if I were to use it, it would feel like I am cheating myself. Um, because like, dude, why don't I just do it and just land properly so that the get foot pad engages again, you know? Um, but also to the other people who don't know about posi tapping and don't know, ooh, Lick, you're killing it out there. And to the people who don't know that your board is posi tapped and they see you do a trick and they thinking that you're landing with your feet properly and you're just engaging it, it's not true. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah, then they're yeah. like, why doesn't it work? Why is my trick not working? I did it exactly like this person. Are they just better than me? And some cases, in most cases, it might be still yes. <laughs> so <laughs> the, 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 those cats like, yo, Kyle from Will Fun stuff, they're just beasts, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're just dope. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I feel like the more that I can level the playing field, like my, my goal was to show, the most miles I've done in a day was, 132 miles in a day. And that was with a stock battery and a hypercharger. Um, and the goal was to show people, it's like, yo, you don't need modifications to ride a lot of miles. You don't need modifications to do well, the tricks that people are working on, like you need practice, practice and diligence. Um, those are things I stand by. But I think positive happening in the school, I think that anything um, where, where we're pushing the sport, it's cool. I think that um, it, maybe if, if you want to talk about something like that, what if that was a feature in the Longo app? Like to choose where you only need to have one foot engaged. Like, you know, that could be something cool. Um, instead of us doing like the, the crazy wiring that could lead to the incidents that people are like, I don't know why it turned off. Um, because that's what happens. We dabble with stuff and then we're like, I don't know why this thing did that thing. Um, but yeah, well, Fred, uh, we only got a few minutes left. I'm going to ask uh, a couple that seem to be kind of like some big ones. So maybe this one, maybe like a little shorter answer. But, uh -huh. I will. Uh, you know, the, the industry is changing to the point where we have events now and events are popping up everywhere. What mm -hmm. are some events that you're either looking for or you would suggest that maybe some other people should check out because you've been to them before? And uh, this was uh, at Little One Wheeler that was okay. Float Life Fest um, is something that everyone should check out. Any any festival vibe that's happening in your city, we're planning some stuff in DC. Um, Oak City Shred Fest, Seek and Shred, um, um, Dirt Surfers, all the ones that the, the homies are putting together, you should check them out. If you can, it's just good to be around other one worlds. Nice. And then uh, to wrap it up, uh, Max Maria definitely seems to be a fan. He knows about your music career. Um, many people do know that you're a talented uh, uh, vocalist and hip hop artist, but I guess he took it even a step further and asked, how will you know, because he said that you've mentioned that you're a catalyst for change, how will you know when you've changed the world or when will you know that you've done enough? Um, that's a tough question. My, my definition of success when it comes to music is when generations after me start making music without compromising their integrity knowing they can still be successful just because i've done it. that's success mm -hmm. to me um but if it if we talk about just impact i mean i know i've done that already i got riders who hit me up from all over the world they're like yo we appreciate you you don't know how much you do for the community appreciate your positivity and what you give out you know um so yeah i i think i've done it there's still more work to do though um, hear that. If hear there that. was something, I'm gonna let you finish the video. If there's something yeah. you could tell the world about One Will in the time we got left, what would you tell me? I would say, I think it's something for a lot of people that I've seen across the board when people say, oh, it's life changing. I realistically think it is something. If you can take the time to learn how to properly ride the board, I do find it to be a life changing sort of event. One mainly because the community of one wheelers are such amazing people 
Um, and then for myself personally, I felt it was life changing, mainly because it just got me back outside. I grew up as an athlete playing traditional basketball, soccer sports, and then I became a computer nerd. Um, I was on my computer for the 10 years straight, strictly not playing outside until I got my one wheel. And now I look forward to going outside every day and just living life and being stoked. Heck yeah, man. Word. No, I, I agree. We can keep it, the chat going. Um, I agree a thousand percent, bro. Um, yeah, the, the one world community, I admit, I'm not a, I don't, I'm not someone who goes out of my way to meet new people. Um, I will meet new people as I encounter them, like at concerts and stuff, but I don't, let's go to the bar to meet people. That's not me. So when the first group ride that I went on, I wasn't so excited about it. I was like, ah, these cats gonna be lame. They're gonna probably be judgmental. They're probably gonna be this. Cause we're, it's a group of adults. You know what I mean? <laughs> and adults tend to be judgmental. We're not kids. We're not like, everyone can be our friend. You know what I mean? Even yep. even in that instant, I was judgmental um, preemptively. Um, I, well, actually, I wouldn't say judgmental, but I was skeptical um, because if you go out expecting everyone you meet to be a nice person, you can get your heart broken. It's yeah. easier to to be on guard at least and expect maybe these guys might be jerks, you know? And dude, they were so cool. <laughs> like I love the DMV crew. Like they're such good people. I enjoy being around them. Um and uh yeah, and there's nothing you can't pay for that. When it comes to, mm -hmm. You can't pay for that period. That's all I gotta say. So I agree with you a thousand percent, bro. Um Let's wrap it up. I just want to, and we'll do another one. I got more videos and we can make more videos. But yo, thank you for being my guest today, bro. Um, is, are there any things you want to plug for the listeners, like your social media and stuff like that? Well, yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's been a blast. Um, I'm Cole Crush at Cole Crush on uh, Instagram. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh, C O L E C R U. S H Cold yeah. Crush. Okay. Um, so you can hit me up there if you ever want to chat. And then also, if you're in the Boston area, Boston One Wheel is great. And then if you find yourself in Worcester, uh, I'm there with uh, WPI Eastgate. That's the school I'm going to. So we're over there, you know, just as I say, just learning how to float and having fun with friends. So yeah, I'm definitely down to connect with anyone about anything. So heck yeah, bro. Word. All right. Um, yeah, man. Thanks again for chatting with me, man. Much love, bro. It was an extreme honor. I'm grateful to know you. No, Definitely likewise, gonna put likewise. you on my team when I start my team, my official Yo, team. I'll be um, practicing until we get there. So yeah, yeah man, I'm and waiting I'll for it. I'll be practicing too. I'm no different. <laughs> you you know? I always practice. I'm the cat who's practicing when no one else is practicing. Yes. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, man. Much love, bro. And let's connect in the future, bro. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And, and shout out to the Boston crew. Y'all y'all took good care of me when I was up there. I love you all. Thank you so much for showing me the trails, showing me around, and housing me, feeding me, you specifically, and um, everyone else who showed love came out for the clinic, Corey, and um, Jesse, and all the homies who are just, uh, y'all cool. I'm sending much love to the Boston crew. Y'all take it easy out there. Yo, peace, peace. Peace. All right. Why are...